following lesson is lesson five, part five, and the final part of our series on sales and kingdoms. This is the end of chapter one. This is over animal systems, which is mainly going to cover all these body systems. Um, you can see the vocabulary for this lesson over to the right, and these will be all of the lessons we'll be discussing discussing all the body systems we'll be discussing in this lesson. So let's get right to it and we'll start off discussing the skeletal and muscular system. The skeletal system is made up of all your bones, all your tendons, all your ligaments. And the skeletal system has two functions. That's to protect your soft organs, so your skull, as you can see here, your brain is hiding behind here. It's at like protection. Your heart and your lungs are behind your ribs. That's protection. Okay, so that's function one. Function two is that it gives you your structure. The reason this rabbit looks like this is because its skeleton is shaped like this. Okay, um, so that's the functions of the skeletal system in a nutshell. Um, but what we need to remember the importance here of the muscular system, how they worked hand in hand, is that the bones don't provide any power. They can't move on their own. Muscles provide the power that you need to produce movement. So skeletal muscles, as you can see here, there's skeletal muscles attached here, muscles to the bone. Um, they're attached by these tough rubbery tendons. When the muscle shortens, the bone will move. Muscles that cause movement work in pairs or opposing groups. As you can see, they're in pairs here. Okay. Um, when a muscle contracts, it pulls on the bone it's attached to, and at the same time, the muscle in the leg here allows the bone to move freely. Okay. So you can think think of a rabbit. This rabbit again when he's running. Um, one muscle group pulls its leg up, the other muscle group pulls the leg down. But what happens first to tell it to move? Well, the very first thing that happens is the brain gets an electric nerve signal and it tells the brain, okay, it's time to move, and it tells the muscles to contract or shorten. And the contracted muscles pull in the tendon that pulls the leg up, and then they pull up and pull down. And this just continues as long as the rabbit keeps moving, it's going to go through that up and down motion. The digestive system is where um, all your food is broken down into nutrients, and that's how you get everything you need um, nourishment-wise, what an organism needs to live. Thinking back to the rabbit again, this is all of the parts of the digestive system and how food gets from the beginning to the end. Okay. So first, what's the rabbit going to do? rabbit gets a carrot. He's going to chew it up with his teeth, his spit and saliva here. They're going to break down the food small enough so it can travel down his esophagus. As it travels down the esophagus, it's going to enter the stomach. Here, while in the stomach, it's um, going to hold on to the food. It's partially digested, and the strong stomach acids in here are going to break down that carrot. Now, I want to mention again, think of how the motion that it uses with the esophagus to get down the stomach is like an accordion. It's like up and down. It's squeezing. Okay, it expands and contracts and it mushes it all the way down into the stomach. Okay. Well, from the stomach, after it's been digested, it's going to empty into the intestines. It's going to go through the small intestine, um, which is here and it's coiled. It's going to go through this area. And those digested... Um, Juices are produced by the liver and the pancreas. Um, that's going to break down the sugars, the proteins, the fats into nutrients. Those nutrients are then absorbed into the small intestine. From there, that's how food gets nutrients get into your bloodstream when blood travels from the heart down the small intestine and it picks it up. Okay. And the large intestine here absorbs all the water and the undigested parts. So all the good stuff you need goes in the small intestine. All the waste goes into the large intestine. That becomes more solid waste. And then that travels out your rectum. 
So that's when you go to the bathroom. So it gets all the good stuff you need, goes into the small intestine and into the blood. All the waste and the extra undigested stuff becomes solid and goes out the end. Okay? That's the digestive system from the mouth and the saliva through the esophagus to the stomach into the small intestine through, the, and it, with the help of the liver and the pancreas, it, then the extra goes into the large intestine and out. Okay? Now the excretory system removes waste products from the body as well. It's removing your excess water, salt, um, sweat. It's just how you get the water out. Cells create waste including carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Um, carbon dioxide is removed through the lungs. The nitrogen wastes are sent to the blood. Okay. The waste is carried in the blood from the liver to the kidneys and the liver breaks it down into toxins. A toxin is a poisonous substance, and the kidneys have to filter the waste from your blood. The kidneys remove waste using these tiny filters called nephrons, and a nephron can separate waste from useful material. Okay? They allow some substances to pass through, then others they don't. They send any of the useful substances back into the blood and they collect the waste. And this is where we're collecting urine, which is your excess water and collected waste from the nephrons. And urine travels from the kidneys to the bladder. And once it's full, the urethra carries the urine from your bladder um, outside of your body. Okay? So, for those of you fifth graders that want the dirty version, I guess. The digestive helps you with number two, and the excretory system helps you with going number one. <laughs> so, that's how the digestive and excretory system work together. The next system that we're going to talk about, how they work together, the respiratory and circulatory system. Two things that all animals need is they need to produce energy, they need oxygen, and they need food. And the two systems here that do that are the respiratory and circulatory system. Now looking at the respiratory system, that's your lungs and all of its passageways. It's comparable if you want to think of a fish has gills, gills or how they breathe, then that's comparable to our lungs, just those exchange of gases. The circulatory system is the heart and all the blood vessels. So we're talking about the rabbit again. It breathes through its nose and its mouth travels into its lungs through these tiny branches that are called bronchi. Bronchi branches both start with B. And then those branches empty into these very thin-walled air sacs. Those air sacs are called alveoli. Alveoli air sacs both start with A, if that helps you. Um, the walls of the alveoli are so thin that gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide can pass through them. How they work together and how they travel through here, and you can see through the picture. Um, circulation begins when oxygen-poor blood enters the heart. It notices that it's oxygen-poor, and it sends oxygen, or sends the blood to the lungs, where it now becomes oxygen-rich. Okay, Oxygen-rich blood is going to pump back to the heart, and then needs its nutrients right, so it's going to go to the small intestine. At the small intestine, it picks up its nutrients. Now that it's nutrient-rich and oxygen-rich, it can be delivered anywhere. So it goes from oxygen-poor to the heart, to the lungs, back to the heart, to the small intestine. And then it can travel back to the heart, it can travel to any other body part, and then it goes through that circle again. That's going through circles so that's why it's the circulatory system. It's traveling in your veins, it's traveling in your capillaries, which are tiny vessels. Um, the dissolved nutrients can pass through their thin walls and enter the cells. Cells pass their waste materials back through those capillaries and they get in the blood. Then it becomes oxygen poor again and we just keep on going through the cycle. Something else we need to talk about is there are open and closed circulatory systems. All vertebrates and some animals, some other animals, all vertebrates, let's keep that in mind, they have closed circulatory systems. That's because blood's carried in blood vessels. Okay? Arthropods, mollusks, other invertebrates, they have open systems. In an open system, an animal's blood just moves around an open cavity. So if you have veins and blood vessels, 
you have a closed circulatory system. If you don't have blood vessels and it's just kind of floating in your body, um, that's a, an open circulatory system. Keep that in mind and remember the difference between an open and closed circulatory system. And the final systems that we're going to talk about how they work together are the nervous and endocrine system. Well, the vertebrate nervous system includes the brain, the nerves, the nerve cord, and your sense organs. Okay, That works with your endocrine system, which contains all of your hormones. And hormones are just chemicals that are released into the bloodstream that change how your body acts. Okay? Example, suppose this rabbit, as you can tell, uh, standing, it sees a fox moving toward it. Well, the response begins, this light begins reflecting off of the fox and it hits the rabbit's eyes. Nerves in the rabbit's eyes send that message to its brain. And that brain sends a message back through the spinal cord that tells it, hey, we better start running because we all know it's a predator. It's going to probably eat me. Okay, So that tells the muscles in the legs to start moving as we talked about earlier with muscles. At the same time, it needs to be going faster. So the endocrine system sends out adrenaline. And adrenaline is a hormone that increases the heart rate. Boom. And that sends extra blood to the muscles. So that gets it pumping faster, which gets it running faster. And that sends it into the flight or, fight or flight thing. And that gets them ready to either fight the fox or run from the fox. And adrenaline is sped up the rabbit's body so it's ready for anything. So adrenaline is important because it speeds up the heart rate, which makes you able to either run faster or fight or just get your body and blood pumping. Okay? So that's how the nervous and endocrine system work together. So again, finally, just to sum up, these are the body systems that we discussed. We discussed the skeletal system, which is your bones, your tendons, and your ligaments. That works hand-in-hand -hand with the muscular system, which is your muscles, which give your bones the power to move. The digestive system is how you break down food, and it can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Remember, it starts with saliva in your mouth and your teeth, travels down your esophagus into your stomach, Good stuff goes into the small intestine. That's where the nutrients get into your blood. The extra waste goes onto your large intestine, and it goes out your rectum. This system works hand-in-hand -hand with the excretory system, which is how you remove cellular waste from the body. That's your sweat, your urine, um, saliva. All the water waste is how that's getting out here. Your respiratory system is your lungs and the passageway, your bronchi, your alveoli. This is how you bring oxygen into the body cells and remove that uh, waste of gas, carbon dioxide. It works hand in hand with the circulatory system, which is your heart and its blood vessels, and that's how you move blood through your body, and it goes from oxygen-poor blood into the heart to the lungs, back to the heart being oxygen-rich, to the small intestine to become nutrient-rich. It can go back to the heart and go back to any other organ and then becomes oxygen poor again and it just keeps circling. And remember you have open open and closed circulatory systems. Closed circulatory systems are all your vertebrate animals, anything that's got blood vessels. Closed or open are your invertebrates where they just kind of have a body cavity and it floats around. The nervous system is your brain, nerves, nerve cord, all your sense organs. Um, that's how you get all your senses from your body systems to tell everything what to do. Kind of like your command center, I guess you could think. And this one works hand in hand with your endocrine system, which is your hormones. Um, and that's how you get your hormones into your bloodstream, like adrenaline, which regulates those life processes. Adrenaline makes your heart pump faster and tells your body to be prepared to run or fight. So this has been our lesson over animal systems. If you have any questions, make sure to ask me. You can message me on Edmodo.